May I now request our chief guest, Mr. Anil Kumble, to deliver the convocation address. Good evening, everyone. I'm used to coming late in the batting order. Vice, Vice, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor of Flame University, Dr. Devi Singh, members of the governing body, members of board of management, members of the academic council, members of the faculty, parents, graduating students, and the entire Flame community. At the outset, let me congratulate all the graduating students. You deserve a huge round of applause. It's a very important and special day for all of you. Not just the members who are sitting in this section, but also to the parents and grandparents and near and dear ones. So round of applause to them as well. Before I share a few lessons that have kept me in good stead in my career, I think see, seeing all of you is really exciting and took me back to my engineering days. Of course, when the results were out, I was playing in South Africa. And when the convocation happened, I was playing another match. So this is my only convocation that I have attended as the chief guest. When I spoke to the members of the faculty and some of the members of the governing council just before I came in here, I was asked a question as to what were the challenges being a coach. I think yesterday was a rehearsal. I think the vice chancellor had made it very clear to all the students that you would come straight to the vice chancellor. And the practice session was to go to the vice chancellor, receive the certificate and move on. And players and students have their own mind, don't they? <laughs> so that's, that's one of the challenges. Whatever you do, inside a changing room, you plan. The players have their own mind. Of course, my college days were very different because during the course of my cricketing career, people asked me, you know, how come you became an engineering graduate and then played cricket. I said engineering was plan A, cricket was plan B. For me, plan B worked. And plan A, I'm starting to work on plan A now, post-retirement. But college days was always fun. You know, for me, college days is all about cricketing teammates, lab assistants, professors who help me in train my engineering outside of the class because I hardly attended class. For me, class was all about practice on the field of cricket and also playing a match. So it was very different to what you encounter at this institution. I've been really impressed with the kind of facilities and the infrastructure that's available to all of you in this university campus. I must congratulate Mr. Nimesh Shah, Mr. Parak Shah, and his entire governing body and, and board of management. Really appreciative that liberal arts, which again is very nascent to India, I mean, I think uh, the Anita, in her address, mentioned, saying that she had to explain what she was doing in this college. I think all of you should be proud, and I'm really proud to say that Flame 
university has been pioneer in starting this liberal arts school in this country. When I was taken around the university, I was glad to see the work done by students on some of the unknown Indian masterpieces like uh, Athangudi tiles or the Bidri. I think these kind of detailing and putting, out, putting it out to the world, I think, is something very special. I'm sure that one day this university will be sp spoken in the same breath as some of the most famous and distinguished universities of the world. So in this advent of WhatsApp and communication of views in 140 and now 280 characters, I don't want to take much of your time. I'd like to also be, be very brief. And with T20 taking over test cricket and ruling our cricketing world and creating new audiences, for me it was a challenge. When I played my first IPL in the year 2008, I had already close, I was close to retiring from test cricket. For me, bowling 60 overs in an innings or in a match was the average that I bowled. Here, I had to bowl 64 overs to complete a tournament. For me, four overs, it took me four overs to warm up, whereas four overs was a complete spell. And sometimes, you had to bowl those four overs in one over spells. So that's the kind of mindset that has happened, so I'll be very brief. I think the three key lessons that I want to share with you here today is balance. Number one is balance. I think success and failure will be part of whatever you go, do ahead in your lives. But it's how you deal with them is what is critical. It's essential that you all don't let success get into your mind and failure to your heart. I'll share a story from my career. The Vice Chancellor, in introducing me, spoke, spoke about my 10 wicket haul in New Delhi against Pakistan. Yes, wherever I go, people remind me of that 10 wicket haul and the performance that I achieved on that particular day. But not many speak about the next test match, which was three days later. We went to Calcutta after beating Pakistan in Firosha Kotla. And the next match was the start of the Asian Test Championship. I don't know how many of you remember that. And this happened in, at the Eden Gardens three days later. So here I was, picked up 10 wickets in an innings in the previous one. And getting wickets should, should have been pretty easy, right? What did I encounter? I struggled hard to get Shoy Bakhtar out. So that's how cricket is all about. This was one of the greatest learnings for me, that every day is a new day. However I performed in the previous game, I had to start afresh the next one. So always be humble about the successes that you enjoy, as that will allow you to recover from setbacks and perform well again. You have to start again, and that's something that you are constantly reminded. Number two is, of course, believing in your abilities. I'm sure a lot of you would have said about that. And for me, when I started my career, there was always doubters who questioned my bowling, said I won't pick wickets as I don't turn the ball. And at best, I'll be able to restrict. At best, I'll probably be able to play one-day internationals for India, and I'd, I can only be a restrictive bowler. And that continued throughout my career. There were always question marks that, okay, he can only bowl well on doctored pitches and uh, not on engineered pitches, doctored pitches. And, and he can only do well in India, not outside of India. So all these you know, things continued. In fact, post my retirement in New Delhi, 2008, I attended the press conference. And the first question was, so Anil, how does it feel to retire with 619 test wickets without actually turning the ball? So I had to answer this question because it came from a journalist. So I said, yeah, it feels really nice that it's taken 18 years for the batsman to figure that out. <laughs> so
So that was the theme of my career. And despite all the wonder wonderful things you all might go on to do, there will be people who will doubt your ability and question your skill. But don't let them bog you down. Don't let them judge you by a conventional mold. Because we are always very clear in the way we need to function. Even as a leg spinner, you know, you have the classical variety and you have an un unconventional variety. At the end of the day, what's the job of a bowler? Is to get wickets. How he gets it doesn't really matter. Whether he bowls leg spin, whether he bowls a straight delivery, whether he bowls a full toss, whether he bowls a yorker, doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, for a cricketer, the last column is extremely important for a bowler. So each one of us is different. Each one of us have our own unique abilities. And we should focus on that and do the best with what we have. Generally, when we fail, we give a lot of importance to failure. And we tend to get bogged down and analyze, overanalyze, and get deeply involved as to why this happened. But very few times, you tend to assess success. Why have I been successful? Why did I win this match? Why is it that we were able to do so well as a team? Because you'll all be team players one day. In any organization, you need to be a part of a team. And some of you will be leaders of those teams. So you need to not just critically look at failures, but also analyze success. And it is these celebrations that you will enjoy and only when you celebrate when you're successful, like today, that you will be able to take failure in your stride. So enjoy this evening and enjoy all the fun. And what is even more important? I spoke about the first two ones, self-belief, balance that you need to do. I mean, there will always be a challenge with your time as you grow older and then as you get more successful. The challenge of time and balancing time will be a critical factor in your life. What is even more important is a very strong work ethic. Even if you have a balanced mind and have a tremendous self-belief, if you don't have a great work ethic, you will never achieve consistent results. At the end of the day, all of us are judged with how consistent we are, rather than being a flash in the pan. And this work ethic means finding certain routines that work for you. And when I talk about routines, it's not just about in your chosen skill, but also about what you do outside of it. How do you deal with your life outside of the work environment? I think that is extremely critical as well. If you look back at a cricketer, you are expected to deliver every single time that you have a ball in, my, in your hand. You know, for example, you know, when I picked up those 10 wickets, the expectations of everyone around you, be it the cricket enthusiast or within the team itself, thought that, okay, he can perform over and over again, pick 10 wickets every time you go there. I, I don't think that will ever happen. It's extremely difficult for you to live up to those kind of expectations. But who knows better? You as a person know what is expected out of you and how you can consistently grow to be relevant. And once you have all these foundations and a good work ethic, surprises or change in environment, you'll be easily able to adapt. For me, the change in environment came much later in my career. For example, getting involved in the IPL in 2008. Like I mentioned, coming down from bowling 60 overs, needing four overs to warm up, to bowling only four overs and trying to Im make an impact in a short game was all about shift in the change in mindset that one had to do rather than in the skill. What do you do in such high pressured environments? You know, you generally tend to start tagging what is a high pressure environment. Your final exam, is that your high pressure environment? 
is a job interview a high pressure environment is uh, getting that one deal when you go there to make a presentation is that a high pressure environment I think once you start giving importance to such events then you tend to bog down under pressure but if you're prepared well if you treat every day as a match and practice the way you're going to play it becomes a lot easier to handle pressure situations and like I mentioned routines not just in your day-to-day -day careers that you choose but also outside of it so I would urge you all to find these routines that work for you because each one like I mentioned is different and there is no one way to success so it's important for you to find what works for you the sooner you can achieve that the better and you will be able to tweak and then adapt to the changes that happen around you and all of this certainly help you not when things go right but most of the time these routine help you when things go wrong and believe me a lot of times things go wrong and very few things go right so you, it's important that you'll be able to pinpoint as to which area was going wrong you can only do that if you're consistently following a set routine so these were some of the key learnings that I wanted to share you're all young bright minds and it's wonderful to see such young talent uh, in, in front of me you have endless opportunities lying ahead you know, when I was growing up it was all about engineering or you know being a doctor but today it's all about chasing your own dream and that's what you have done and uh, flame has given you those wings to fly and these are great times the world is your stage and I wish you all the very best for all that lies ahead enjoy the day with your family and friends and while you all take strides in your career do not forget to pause now and then and be thankful for your near and dear ones as they are the reason you're all here today so on behalf of my wife and myself I'd like to thank Flame University for giving me an opportunity to be here amongst young achievers and thank you Nimesh Bhai and Viji Siddhartha who's here thank you for giving us an opportunity to see this wonderful campus and I'm really excited that uh, a new sport co sporting complex is coming up in this uh, university so it's not just about academics but also a holistic development is what this university is all about so I wish Flame University all the very best and once again to all you young achievers enjoy tonight celebrate but at the same time I'm sure you'll get your deposit back thank you